Hi, everybody, and welcome back. I have been on a excursion, doing a few other things the past few days. So I am going to jump into this video about Nicole Kessinger. And before I get into it, I want to lay a couple ground I say ground rules, but kind of just say, let the, how about we lay the foundation? And a couple things I want to say. Um, and this is important because this has been coming up on a lot of different pages. I'm not the only one saying this, so I will say it here. Trolls will be banned. They just get banned. I don't even question it. If Keep in mind, if you attack someone else, if you use an F-bomb, say you're effing whatever um, to someone else, or if you in any way criticize meaning in a very mean way to someone, you'll probably be either blocked or your comment will be deleted. So I wanna give you that heads up because this community that we are in conversation with is a safe community. And I wanna make this a place where we can talk about what's really on our mind, what we really feel, what we really think, without someone screaming at us. And I think that's a very important point to make is that, and I said this in some of the other videos, is say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it mean. So that's very important. The other thing is that, um, you know, when we talk about Nicole Kessinger, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna start in on this. When we talk about her, what I have to say is not gonna be very popular because it is, as you all are getting ready, as you know me a little bit, I'm not always the one who says, yeah, and gets on the bandwagon with everybody. So let me start by saying that what I'm saying to you is my opinion, I have read all of the findings. There's about 2,000 pages from the uh, CBI and the whole case, the whole case. I've read all of the stuff about Kissinger and Kissinger. I don't even know how to say her last name, so I'm just gonna call her NK or Nicole for this video. Um, I've read everything. And, you know, it's really tough for me because I feel very strongly about this, and it's odd because I wasn't really part of the Me Too movement, so to speak. I observed it, but one of the things I want to say is that this is a very interesting situation when we look at Nicole because, you know, why is it we immediately blame the woman? Now, it's not to say that she didn't do something wrong, okay? So I don't want to get a million like, well, she had an affair and she cheated. I know she did. But let's stay with this for a minute. He cheated on his wife. He lied to his wife. Now, this isn't to say she didn't have a part, and I'm going to talk about that. So I want you to stay with me on this just to hear me out. Because one of the things I think that we can do very quickly is jump to a conclusion. You know, I had somebody watch like a minute of my my uh, video and then they went on about it and I was like, you didn't even watch it. <laughs> you, know, you didn't hear what I had to say. And so if you're not going to be listening to the video and you're not going to be talking about the video, what are you doing? It's kind of like trying to get on, you know, jump on and say, hi, let's talk about pizza. <laughs> what? Okay. So um, one of the things that I want to say is that we're, I'm going to focus on it a little bit from Nicole's point of view. And when I use her point of view, that doesn't mean that I'm saying she's innocent. It doesn't mean that I'm saying she did nothing wrong, okay? Because there's a lot of moral questioning here. That said, I want you to know that we either believe that law enforcement did their job or not. And I'm one of those people that does believe that the Leos did a good job. I feel that this case was a stellar case of how they broke Chris Watts down, how they went into everything, and even discovering Nicole Kessinger, how they got her in, uh, you know, talking to them. She, she came in of her own free will, let's put it this way. But I want you to keep this in mind. She is in witness protection. Now, what does that tell you a little bit? Energetically, let's look at that. In order to be in witness protection, you have to be endangered. Now, this is really strange because one of the things that we want to look at is we're at a very different time right now than when Amber Fry 
and Scott Peterson were in their thing. First of all, we knew that, that Amber never knew. And there's a lot of things that Nicole didn't know that are in the discovery materials that a lot of people didn't see. So we're going to talk about that as well. But when we look at someone like Amber Fry, and yes, she wrote a book, and yes, she did all those things, it was a different time. It was a very different time. Um, Amber also did not know he was married at all. Like he never, he just was single to her. When we look at this guy, you know, this jabroni, (laughs) you know, when we look at Chris Watts, we're looking at a guy who lied. He said they were separated. He said they were getting, they were, they were separating. And he also used the D word with her, um, divorce. And one other thing I want to say about that. Now, we're going to roll the timeline back and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some inconsistencies in the information um, and all of that kind of stuff. So there's also some things I'm going to say that I feel energetically about this that I'm going to tell you that I feel. So let's look at this woman probably did feel guilty. And I know some of you are going to go, well, she should. But okay. I'm going to preface this by saying, as we're rolling back the timeline, I'm going to tell you a story, and this this relates, bear with me. I was in my 20s, and I was living in New York, and I was flying, sorry, my nose is always itchy. I don't know, the minute I start energetically talking, I was flying from New York to Charlotte. I was doing, I was on a business trip, and I was standing in the airport, and I look over, and there's this, like, exceedingly handsome man (laughs) standing there, and he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and I'm going, wow. I think I was about 26, you know, and I wasn't that naive. I, you know, I was smart, but I was kind of like also a little naive. And he comes over and he starts talking to me. First thing he says is, tell me you don't live in Charlotte. And I'm like, I I, I don't. (laughs) I live in New York, you know. And we talked for a little while and we boarded the same flight and we sat together in those days you could and we just talked and we had a lovely talk and I really liked him and he didn't have a ring and I was very excited and he asked me on a date and I said yes and I went on this date and I was sitting at dinner with him we were at this fabulous little restaurant down in the village and all of a sudden I looked at him and I said are you married and he said yeah and I was kind of like what and he said yeah I said, where's your wife? He said, well, um, today she's at a relationship seminar. And I thought to myself, you scumbag. And the first thing that goes through my mind. And he said, yeah, and we just had a baby. And I'm like, where's the baby? He said, well, I got a sitter for tonight. And I thought, waiter. (laughs) And I said, could you wrap my food to go? And he said, where are you going? I said, I'm leaving. And I don't want to hear from you again because this is not my jam, this isn't the way I roll, I'm not doing this. And I left and I always had that memory of being really angry that he didn't tell me, you know, before he took me out. Now, when we look at just a a, a similarity, all right, and there's more to that story, which I'll tell you in a moment, Um, But when we look at the similarity with Nicole, what I want to say to you about that is that, you know, they have this like this flirt that's going on in the office. And, you know, those kinds of things happen all the time. You flirt with people. You kind of like have a little energy. Hopefully you don't act on it. Um, And I want to be really upfront and say I do not believe in any way, shape or form. And I may lose you at this. I do not believe that this woman, Nicole, would have stayed with him if she thought he was about to murder his family. And I need to say that because I feel she got caught up in something and I believe she's guilty of some things, which I'm going to share with you, but I don't believe that she really knew where he was going. Now I know there's some, some stuff out there that says, look, here's a camera. She was at his house. You know, this proves it. Well, she said she was at his house. She did not say she was there the night of the murders. However, she did admit she was at, she had been at his house and Again, I go back to what law enforcement did, which was put her in witness protection. This woman had her life being threatened because she had an affair with this man. 
who, by the way, did not tell her a lot of things. Now, a couple things I want to say. I know the first thing that you're probably typing already, so wait. The first thing that was actually corrected in the disclosure documents or whatever you call them, the documents, the court documents, there was a typo when they said that she was Googling uh, Shanann in September, I think it was September 1st, 2017. They meant to type 18. So the truth is that she was not Googling her in other words, Kessinger was not Googling Shanann a year ago. It was after Shanann had died, she was Googling her. So the other thing to keep in mind about Nicole is she did not have social media. She wasn't on Facebook or Instagram. So a lot of that, like cutting off from all that was, and remember that when you get a covert narcissist, you get somebody like a Chris, right? He's going to do everything she does. So what did he do? He gets off social media. He, he removed his whole account on August 8th. Now, why do you think he did that? And I'm going to jump around a little bit now because I know some of you are ahead, so I'm going to go back and forth. He deleted his Facebook account. This is my own thinking on it because he did not want Nicole to be reading posts about how wonderful he was saying his wife was when we know Shanann was posting for him. So she would post stuff on his Facebook page that was like, you know, my wife is so wonderful. I love doing Thrive. I love. So he didn't want Nicole seeing that. So he was starting to do triage as it was getting closer and closer around keeping Nicole from finding out more information. Now, I want you to imagine this scenario for just a minute. So, and by the way, remember the guy I told you about that was married that I went on that date with? I was actually out with a bunch of girlfriends and some people I didn't know, you know, and uh, this one woman was showing pictures of her husband and her new baby. <laughs> That's right. It was her. It was, I saw a picture of him. That was his wife and that was his child. And I was like, oh my God. But when she was talking I recognized that she was the same personality as he was. She was just that snarky kind of, you know, like take it. She would just take the ring off your finger if you've let her, you know, that kind of person. So I just want to say that it was very interesting to me that that came full circle. So let's talk about Nicole. So I want you to understand when we look at the Me Too movement, we look at all that. One of the things if we've learned nothing is to Stop accusing the woman right away. You know, we've got to back up. We've got to give her a little bit of benefit of the doubt. Because whenever we look at an affair, we go, oh, God, that guy, I can't believe he's a cheater. But we call her a whore. She gets denigrated more than the guy who's married, cheating on his wife and kids, and he finds a piece on the side. He's a, you know, in the old days, that was okay. But she gets ruined. So I want to give you that kind of differential just a little bit. And here's the thing I want to say about Nicole. She's very naive. And yet she was extremely sexual. She was extremely addicted to this man. I do believe, for those of you who are thinking it, I do believe that she and Chris were really solid mirrors of each other in some ways. I think the difference is that well, Nicole was probably a little bit narcissistic. I mean, we kind of all are. I think that she was more of a love addict than anything else. Now, let's look at another thing that she kept saying to her friend Charlotte, by the way. This was in the, um, in the discovery materials. Charlotte, um, you know, was mentioning, they were talking about love and relationships. And, and Nicole said, I'm always unlucky. It's just been, you know, and she said something that's very telling. She said, I'm always second. You know, it's like, it's like, I'm always like the second person in line. It's like, I never get them the first time around. So what she was saying was, she said, you know, the guy's either already married and had kids already and he's divorced or he's jaded. Now, what is that telling you? Well, remember, Chris Watts wrote all those notes to her that says, we're going to have lots of firsts. Immediately, we know that this is her wounding. She's always second fiddle.
So Chris was trying to help her be first in order to woo her, right? Because what is, what is this kind of psychopathy or whatever you want to call it, forgive me for using jargon that's not right, but what is this kind of like thinking do? He wants to get in her pants. He wants a piece of this. So he's going to do whatever it takes. He's going to say whatever he needs to say. But what does he hear from her right away? She probably said to him quite a bit, I'm tired of being second. I'm tired of being second. And through every email, he, everything he says, we're going to have lots of firsts, you and I. I highly doubt that this woman was thinking that a first would be, yeah, kill your family. And then you and I can be the first to have kids together. It's just not going to happen that way. That is not what was on this woman's mind. But he started planning much sooner. Now let's look at this, the timeline. The timeline of when Nicole goes to North Carolina. Now, we know that they started their, their physical relationship earlier. Now, some people are saying way earlier, but according to the police reports and what we're seeing, um, what I'm seeing from some of the interviews she had with the police, the... Um, their physical relationship started late June. Now, I'm not going to give exact dates and all that. I suspect it was right after Shanann and her dad and the kids went back to North Carolina. What do you think, what do you think Chris Watts said to her? Hey, I'm not kidding you, man. Because remember, they've been hanging out in the park, right? He meets her after work a couple nights a week. They talk. Listen, this is a very, and they kissed in the park right? So this is a very seductive situation. Here's a girl that's always second place. And what do you think she is again? She's playing it out. She's second place trying to be, be first place. So this woman, this girl, Nicole, is so wounded, she's going to try and get this first place, right? So what do you think Chris Watts says to her? He says, remember I told you we're separating, babe. She went off to North Carolina for six weeks because when she comes back, we're going to sell the house. Everything's going to be separated. The separation that he presented to Nicole was one of, well, this is the first step. She's leaving. She's not even here. Now, I'm going to share a couple things with you that are my opinion. This is my opinion, 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 okay? This is my hit on it, my little in, intuitive hit. I see that when she went to that house, and she went twice according to her, I think it might have been once or twice more. I do not think she just walked in that house, had dinner with him, and left. I think these two monkeys were all over the place. I think they were all over each other. I think they like, you know, they were like just going at, at each other, okay? So the point is that they were like, they were on each other. So I think they did have sex in the house. Guilt number one, okay? I don't know about you, but if I had done that and I have, and I do have a, a bit of a moral compass. Sorry, guys, I do. I probably wouldn't have done it in the first place, but when you're naive and you're dumb and you think that they're separating, you know, you're going to believe a guy if you're really into him and he seems so sincere you're kind of going to believe that he's separating. Now, here's the difference. Most women, you notice I used the word woman, women. Most women will say, you know what? That sounds really exciting. When you're divorced, I would love to revisit this with you. Not Nicole. That isn't her makeup. Her makeup is that she's always second. So she has to get into a relationship to be second so she could possibly become first. See, the only reason we have these patterns is to try to change them. So she becomes, right, she becomes the other woman again. She's the second choice. But she starts to become first. He's saying to her, we're going to have lots of firsts. It's going to be you and me. So those are some things that I'm going to, put out there and we're going to, I've got more. I wrote, took some notes and stuff too, and some stuff I want to read with you. Um, okay. So let's look at it this way. You know, here's this married guy and he is everything she wants. At least that's what he presents as, right? 
And he says, and we're separating. I promise you this is over. I don't want to be with her anymore. He was so loyal to her. He wasn't even sleeping with his wife anymore. Now we know that before they went to North Carolina, before Shanann left for North Carolina, they were having sex like rabbits because here's, the, well, obviously, but, um, but they were having a lot of sex because Shanann even says it. She says, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden he stopped touching me. Well, that's because he was now with another woman and he was loyal to that woman. So the thing I want to say about that is that, um, okay, so sorry, I want to get, make sure I have these notes. You know, when I was a kid, my dad, as I mentioned, my dad was in World War II. And one of the things he used to say all the time is the tempter is as guilty as the thief. And I think that's what we're looking at here is that we're looking at Nicole as she tempted him, she's guilty, but I think the things she's guilty of are not the things that, that a murderer would be guilty of. I think she's guilty of bad judgment, she's guilty of bad behavior, she's guilty of inappropriate behavior, and she's certainly guilty of adultery. Murder? No. And I really saw that when I was reading a lot of the uh, interviews and the discovery documents. You can come up and sit with us. So what I want to say about that is, hi, baby. Hi, I know, we know. Um, the, the, a couple things I want to say is that, you know, if you're going to be calling somebody an adulterer, if you're going to say that this woman's a slut, blah, 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 you better be above reproach. Because the truth is we've all made bad decisions. I'm not saying. Okay. And, and in this, I'm really saying that she probably, hi, sweet pea. She probably did not, he likes my perfume. She probably, she probably did not. And I'm going to say this. I don't think she had any idea that this, this, this man was going to kill his wife. And she even says it coming up. So let me, um, okay, buddy, sit down. Thank you. Um, Okay, so when we look at, um, at, this, at the idea of the Me Too movement, too, um, I want to tie that in just a little bit because I think it is a socially conscious movement. I don't believe that means men are guilty. I'm not into that kind of dialogue, okay? But I, what I am into is looking at the cycles and the social cycles of it where, um, you know, if we really think about this, this is a girl who had to go and witness protection because the public was outraged, so outraged by this crime, they couldn't imagine that he acted alone. And they blamed her for, for being the catalyst. So while I'm going to say to you, yes, I do think she was part of the catalyst, I also think that this was coming. This was coming. He wanted out. He found her, and I think if it wasn't her, it would be another woman. I really don't believe that that Nicole really would do that. I just don't, I don't see it. I see that she had some like dark tastes, but I don't see that she was really someone that would do that. I want you to keep in mind that um, the affair for her was an outcome just as bad as his outcome of killing his family. Because think about this. This, and bear with me before you jump to judgment on that. Basically, he took not only Shanann's life and Bella and Nico, he also took Nicole's life because she really can't live the way she was living. There, she was going to be ostracized. She was going to be an outcast in society. We might as well have her walking around with a scarlet A because this woman was never going to have a life again. I want you to think about this. You know, there are people who have indiscretions and they make mistakes and an affair happens and no one's the wiser, right? It happens. People make their amends or not. Marriages break up. They marry their mistress. They don't. But what we're really talking about here is that this woman became really so exposed. And if we really look at it, I want you to think about this for a minute. I want you to imagine, and bear with me. I know it's really hard, but I want you to think about this for a minute. Where's my, okay. So I want you to imagine that this, right, this, we didn't have this as much. I mean, we had it, but we weren't using it to the degree when, uh, when we look at um, 
Peterson, the Peterson case when we look at Lacey. So, and also you have to remember that we're looking at this, this day and age, people are sexting each other. They're sending pictures, nude pictures, and that's what uh, Nicole was doing. So she was sending him these pictures. She was probably sexting him. She was probably doing racy texts that were like, oh, I can't wait to da, 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 da. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was having an affair with somebody, and I'm not saying I would, imagine that for one minute you were. I don't know about you, I would erase every text ever. And the reason is, I don't want people to see that. Can you imagine? I'd be like, oh my God, his kids are missing. Now, there are things to think about here. Um, she suspected it, and she even says that. She suspected something was wrong the first night when the, the sound was on loud and he was in his room, there were no sheets on the bed, and she said, you know, she didn't remember that conversation. Now, I don't think he confided in her that, uh, that he was going to kill his wife and his kids. I really do believe that no matter what you want to say about her, I really don't think that this is a girl who would be involved in that. Now, kind of weird sex, maybe, okay? But not, but not that. And, and the reason I say that, and I know this is going to be very unpopular with people because I know you're going to say, well, wait a minute, you know, um, armchair detective said this or this one said that. And it's fine that they say it. I'm going a, a, a according to what law enforcement told us, which is that she too was a victim of Chris Watts. Now, if we look at it like that, if we take it from that point of view, let's go further into, um, you know, was she a trigger? Maybe, okay. Um, did she pull the gun? He did, but she might have moved it along. And perhaps it was her wrong words that made it happen. Now, how many of you, be honest with yourself and be honest with me, how many of you out there literally, as a woman, you've pressured a guy about marriage? Now, some of you haven't. Some of you have been like, no, I met my husband, it was good, we had to go along, blah, blah, blah. How many of you have ever been in a relationship where you pressured somebody? I know I did. You know, somebody to move along, make a decision, whatever. And one of the things that you would look at here is that if she's having an affair with somebody who's separated, she would want to know, when, it, when are you going to do this? That's why she's helping him look for an apartment, because she's thinking, I don't want to be having an affair. I don't want this. I don't, you know, she kept everything secret. Everything was like very secretive because she was like, look, until you're really out of this, I don't want to be involved because there are kids involved. She even said, I never met the kids. I didn't want to meet the kids, not because they weren't darling. But here's the thing. She did say to him, you know, I'm, a, I'm frustrated. I want to get to see you and I have to wait till after the kids are asleep or, you know, what's going to happen? Are you going to be moving out? Think about this as triggers for him, right? Because when the children, when he told her they're gone. That was when she first in the, in some of the documents and I'm going to read it in a bit. But when she, when he said to her that they're gone, that was when she started saying, what does that mean? Gone? Like, what do you mean? He said, well, they're gone. And that was when he admitted to her because she said, you know, I'm seeing these things on the news now. And I'm seeing, and, and this is, I'm paraphrasing, but basically she's, cause he had told her, you know, yeah, she's pregnant, but it's not my child. And then she's seeing things on the news that it is his. And she's like, what the heck? And he says, I'm so sorry. I was afraid if I told you, I would lose you. This is a message he sent to her. He's doing everything he can to try and reel her in. And yes, it worked. I mean, of course it worked. She's going to believe him. She's fallen for him. She thinks he's telling her the truth. You know, again, she did sow the seeds, guys. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to like pull punches on that. But you know what? Think about this. I don't think she really sowed the seeds for him to kill his family. 
I don't think she knew. I really don't think that she, and she even says again and again and again to the police, if I'd known, I would have done something. And I do have to tell you, I do believe that. I think that while she knew something was up, I don't think she knew what it was. Because the problem is, and people ask me all the time, you know, because I've made some <clears throat> questionable relationship, you know, choices in my life, and not with a married guy. But um, I've made some questionable choices, and people have said, oh, come on, you say you're psychic, didn't you know? And it's like, it's like giving yourself a massage. I mean, you don't know, like, oh, that feels so good. You think you know, but you can't always know what's going on in your own life, especially if you're too close to it. You know, when you're this close to a tree, it doesn't look like a tree. So remember that there were a lot of things that she probably, Nicole probably didn't want to see because he told her otherwise, you know, um, I, I remember when I was little, and this, this ties in, in, in not seeing what we actually, or not believing what we see. When I was little, and this, my parents had a fairly volatile relationship, and I remember one night I was coming out of my room, I was getting some water, I was carrying my little water, I was going to get water in the kitchen, and I looked up, and there's my father like this, holding my mother by the scruff, and about to punch her, and I went, <gasps> And they both looked at me and they went, it's fine. Everything's okay. Just go to bed. You know, and I'm like, now I knew something was wrong, but they're telling me it's fine. And who am I going to believe at eight years old, right? I'm going to say, oh, that's fine. Even though I know something's wrong. So think about that, you know, believing people that we love, even though we don't, we don't know it. Now, here's the thing. You could say, well, that wasn't real love. It was lust. Yeah, it was. And I don't know much more than that in the sense that I can only go with the idea of Nicole saying, I really loved him. We said, lo we said, I love you to each other. And believe me when I tell you, it's like, um, when we look at this, let's look at the ideas that the two of them had. You know, his idea was, um, you know, I'm going to kill, kill my wife. And her idea was he's going to leave his wife. And that's his guilt. Her guilt is that, you know, she's guilty of loneliness. She's guilty of such severe loneliness that he's a man. He's into her. He's breathing. She's into him. Boom. Come on, really. How many of us have gotten into relationships? I know you're going to say, but they haven't killed somebody. Yes, of course. Of course, that's the, the end result here. But honestly, I don't know. And I don't believe that that is the outcome Nicole thought was going to happen. And I'm going to look. I mean, all of us have made those kind of choices. So I'm just going to look here. Bear with me for one second. I'm going to, because I have, I picked up the wrong pair of glasses. They're not even mine. Um, so I do have up here uh, the, uh, the notes from the Watts case that I wanted to go over with you. Uh, just a little bit. Okay, it's in here somewhere. Okay, give me a sec. Um, it's so funny. Usually, if I'm if I'm teaching, I'll say, "Okay, so just talk amongst yourselves." You know, here we go, Watts. Um, and this is the timeline. Um, it's just uh, let's see. Okay, so this is my hold on. No, this is the full thing, and I wanted to just find the um, the end result. Uh, let's see. Is this it? Um, God, it's so – it just goes on and on. Okay, here's my notes. Sorry, I was right behind. All right. So let's see. Um, let's see. I want to look at this. Uh, Chris, uh, okay. All right. Here it is. This, this is the discovery document, and this is what the notes are from the law enforcement officer. Sorry, I didn't write who it is, their name down here, but it, was, uh, it says 574 discovery. It says she, and this is referring to um, Nicole, she, she, called, she called primarily texting with Chris. Um, she did not recall talking with Chris, but she confronted Chris about Shanann being 15 weeks pregnant. 
Chris asked if this ruins everything with their relationship, and she told him to focus on his family. She told Chris she knew the child was his and was not from an affair of Shanann's. She continued to encourage him to find his family. Nicole confronted Chris to stop lying. She said on Tuesday she started to become suspicious of Chris. She said he did not seem to be as concerned as he should be, and he should have been more concerned with her, his family, and he appeared to be more concerned with their relationship. I asked Chris about what he talked to Kessinger about before his wife got home, and he had said they always talk and it was about their day. Um, Chris said Kessinger only knew about the disappearance by what she saw on the news. Chris and Kessinger said Kessinger didn't know his wife was pregnant, but she does now. Now this is, I'm taking this excerpt out of an interview that they had with Chris about Kessinger. And I really do believe that um, Chris is so selfish anyway, he would have thrown her under the bus if he thought uh, if he thought he could get away with the crime. Believe me, he knew he couldn't. Um, Chris said he was scared to tell Kissinger about the pregnancy because he felt like Kissinger wouldn't have gone on a date with him if she knew. This was early on. This was back in June when he knew Shanann was pregnant. He didn't want to tell Kissinger because he knew if he did, she wouldn't go on a date with him. Chris said Kessinger knew he was married with kids, and um, Chris asked if we were going to talk to, to Kessinger, and, and we said yes. Um, let's see. Um, and we, uh, Coder asked Chris if Kessinger was going to tell us she knew he was going to kill his family, and he said no. Chris said Kessinger just knew they were going to hang out more after he got his own place. Chris said she, Kessinger, genuinely liked me. Chris begged us not to put Kessinger's name in the news because she had been through enough in her life. During the meeting with Nicole, CBI victim advocate uh, spoke with her for a short period of time. After this conversation, Nicole inquired with me how to change her name. I gave her cursory information. Um, and then uh, Nick, Nicole apologized for deleting the text messages and phone log between she and Watts. She admits to being very worried about the information being lost. I spoke with Nicole about her deleting messages and told her there was no criminal charges against her. Now, um, then this is where this is where it gets interesting because he then asks her um, what she meant by the children making her uncomfortable. This is the, um, the, uh, the, sorry, the police interrogator. Um, let's see. Okay, this was the, uh, this was now the texts between Nicole and um, sh her friend, Charlotte Nelson. This is what the officer now asked. I, I specifically asked what sh she, Nicole, meant by his children making her uncomfortable. Nicole said she wants her own family. She said she never said anything to him about his wife or children being a problem. She never said to him his kids were an issue. She said she was thinking about building her own life and that he already had a life. She said she never said anything about kids damaging their relationship. And she said there was never a conversation with Watts that he may have thought she was making a reference to Shanann or his children being a problem. I don't agree with that. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, I do think that, and, and I'm going to share with you, I don't think she had those words with Chris, but I think she had that underlying thing of like, well, I want to be first. I really wish you weren't with them. I wish you had a place of your own. She was helping him try to find a place. He discovered how much money it was really going to cost. You know, these are the kinds of things that he was starting to feel put in a corner, right? But remember, this is a guy who felt put in a corner if, if he was going to, like, do anything on his own. He, this, he, he had no, I'm just going to say it, the guy had no game. We found out maybe he did. But, uh, you know, 
And the other thing to keep in mind is that the way he played Shanann as well, keep in mind that it takes two, right? So you always are going to find your partner mirroring you. So the more helpless he was, the more Shanann had to be dominant. So the more helpless Nicole was, the more he had to be dominant. I'm not saying one's alpha, beta, whatever, omega, whatever. I'm saying that the roles were such that they went back and forth. I think that Nicole kind of said, you know, the conversation she had with Charlotte, I do think she had a conversation similar with Chris. I don't think she said it that way. I don't think she ever said that, you know, I want you to take your kids out. I think she probably said, you're naive if you think you're going to find a two bedroom apartment in your same neighborhood or in a similar neighborhood close by for the amount of money you want to pay. And I think that started to get his mind going. I also think that he pushed Shanann into wanting to separate, all right? But I also think that there's a lot in that relationship that I want to talk about separately. But I do want to just finish this up with, with Nicole and say that, um, uh, let's see, she said there was never a conversation with Watts um, that may have thought she was making reference to his family being a problem. Nicole said that she was 100% committed to Watts at this time, but what, what she was not sure about is if he was the man she wanted to spend the rest of her life with. Now, I want y'all to remember, you know, I don't know about you, but like I'm into a little bit into astrology, right? So if I know a guy is like, and I, not now, but when I was younger, if I knew he was like a Scorpio, I'd be in the astrology books, you know, or if I had a fantasy about marrying him, I'd be like, where's the best, most romantic place to get married? I might Google it. I might Google wedding gowns. So the fact that she Googled it or looked at it, I don't know. You know, I don't know a woman alive who didn't have, who doesn't have, go on a date with somebody or two and go, what if? And then they become a creep and you go, oh, whatever, it was a fun fantasy. But I think that we have to look at this a little bit more like, this was a very naive, young 29 year old. This was not, I mean, she was extremely sexual, but I don't think she was very smart. You know, we're kind of looking at like a remake of Dumb and Dumber, all right? But, I don't think that makes her a murderer, you know, and, and I can't tell you how many guys, how many times have you seen this in a court of law where they go, well, just because he was an adulterer, he may have cheated, but that doesn't make him a murderer. You know, we accept that as a, as a, in a criminal court case, we accept that from a guy, but just because she cheated on her husband didn't mean she killed him. Well, a lot of times it does mean that because a woman is just like, you know, Oftentimes, she's going to kill the guy. But think about this. We look at these stereotypes, and we immediately assume that she is a horrifyingly bad human being. She made stupid choices. She made bad choices. I'm not, and believe me when I tell you, she's not somebody I'm going to be friends with, okay? I'm much more likely to be friends with Shanann because I think that Shanann fell into a situation that she was the controlling one because Chris put her in that role. And I think it was only a matter of time till he would have moved Nicole into that role too. So as I say that to you, um, this is important. Nicole said this whole case had shocked her and he lied so much. He lied to everybody. He had everybody fooled. Nicole went on to state she really believed that Shanann had left and believed that Shanann was just upset. So you know, this is stuff to understand that this was her initial idea of what was happening because she's only seeing it from his point of view. Now suddenly when she sees the news and she starts putting things together, it's just, it's different. But here's something interesting. She said that when she goes back through everything, she did not see any red flags and she had no idea who he's he was going to kill his family. She recalled thinking how long it would take for his brain to shift for him to get to do this. She said he could have done this if he was in, if she, it, oh, here's, here's, she said he could have done this if she was in his life or not and thought it would have been her or a coworker who could have been killed too. She said a lot of people will blame her and call her the catalyst. Catalyst. She said it does not compute to her. Then she stated that 
how, you know, how can he just say, hey, my family just disappeared and I'm not going to question that. She said Watts was so into his girls and she supported him being with his girls. Nicole said it made her happy when he was with his children. She said, I legitimately think his cheese was sliding off his cracker long before he met me. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, and I think you have to remember that um, it's just, when we look at that, I think that she's also trying to put all this together. She's trying to figure out how she could not know. You know, and let's put it this way, everybody. Remember, in America, we're innocent until proven guilty. She was never proven guilty. In fact, these, this law enforcement team was so top-notch. I really do believe that while she did some very questionable things, I don't think she had any part in the murders. And I think that you know, pursuing her would not, obviously wouldn't bring back the family, but it also really was not their, the case in the sense that what were they going to do? Go after an adulteress? And what were they going to do? Find her guilty of thoughts and, and saying things and feelings? I'm telling you, if they arrested everybody for having bad thoughts, I don't know anybody in America right now who would not be in prison. So we have to remember that, mm, and you know, even, I love Joe Kenda, you know, uh, Homicide Hunter, because he'll go, you know, if I was going to arrest people for doing stupid things, everybody would be in jail. <laughs> so we have to remember here that we may be outraged by the outcome of this, but we have to remember who the puppeteer was. The puppet master in this was Chris Watts. He is the guy that did this. And the more we focus on that, we can look at the swath of victims he left in his path. And I'm going to tell you, he did destroy Nicole's life in the sense that she's cut off from everybody she knew. She's being protected because her life was threatened. Why? Because we live in a bullying society that in Filled, filled with vigilantes who want to take the law into their own hands. And really, honestly, we don't know if she did this. And I'm going to say to you, I believe, once again, third time's a charm, I'm going to say to you, I believe that law enforcement did not think she was guilty. And by that, of a crime. Um, okay. This is something else I want to say, um, that they then interviewed Nelson, who was the friend of Kessinger. And he says the the guy who interviewed the friend who was texting with uh, with Nicole. I asked Nelson for some context to that test text, as it seemed that a man with kids may be a negative thing based on the words in the text alone. Nelson said that she does not think that Kessinger was against him having kids, and Kessinger wants kids too. She has just had bad luck with men in her past. Kessinger wants to find someone, and when she does, it turns out the guy is lying or something, okay? Kessinger seems to take it upon herself and feel like she is picking the wrong guys. Well, she is. Nelson encourages Kessinger that she will find someone. Nelson does not think the BS part in the text was meant as a negative, meaning it's BS that he had... Um, that, uh, that he had kids, meaning that Kessinger felt the guy having kids was a negative. It's, she meant it's BS because that's what I always attract, but it's not, it wasn't him. It was her, again, taking on and talking to her friend about what she was feeling. He then asks how Kessinger's doing. Nelson, the, the, uh, the friend, told me that she's a mess, Kessinger's a mess, and says she cannot say much about the case. Nelson thinks Kessinger feels partially responsible as maybe he went crazy because Kessinger came into the picture. Kessinger liked the guy. Nelson thinks Nicole needs a good therapist. I asked, the cop asked, if there's any indication that Kessinger may want to maintain a relationship with the guy. Nelson said that Kessinger wants to cooperate in the fullest to make sure he stays in jail. See, the other thing I want to say to you is that they found out that the woman in the, uh, the what is it, the Tinder thing, who said she had a, an affair with Chris Watts, actually worked at the same salon as Nicole Atkinson. So it was all BS. That was BS. Um, and we don't know about the guy thing either. Um, let's see. Um, okay. 
uh, let's see. Um, this is what Nicole, excuse me, what Shanann said to Chris before, a couple days before she was killed. Um, she said in a reply to him, she said, that's what you said last night. Um, meaning you can't even say why you're married to me. Like he wasn't sure, blah, blah, blah. That's a stab in the heart. You didn't say you didn't want to lose us. You said you didn't want to lose the kids. Watts responded, I don't want to lose anyone. And I, I kind of took that out as a very important thing to say to all of you. It's the old cliche, guys. Like, I don't want to lose you. He's probably saying that to everybody he's involved with. I don't want to lose you, Mom. I don't want to lose you, Dad. I don't want to lose you, Nicole. I don't want to, you know, he's all full of it. And, you know, something really hit me, which is that, you know, I looked at that wedding picture with Chris and uh, Shanann and where he's standing in the background glaring at her, and I thought, how would I feel in that moment if my mother had not come to my wedding? I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed at her. So it's kind of like odd. The whole thing is odd. But anyway, then one of the things I wanted to point up was um, the picture. Now, some of you remember the picture of the doll with the sheet pulled over it. It was a twister. You know, uh, it was actually the game of twister, you know, the plastic. And it's funny. I've been saying twisty all week to y'all. So, you know, he's twisty. Um, meaning twist the words. Um, he, the image, uh, Watts took it, then he sent it to Shanann, and she said, don't know what to think about this. Um, and then he canceled his Facebook account, and Shanann said, why did you cancel your Facebook account? Ronnie Watts asked him, she didn't, he didn't respond to her. Ronnie, his father, asked if if Watts deleted his Facebook account, Chris replied, yes, sir, liberated myself. Now, this is super important because this was on the 8th. This was when all of these things, I believe that he was already planning, and it may even be been before, um, and there's another gal who I just love on uh, YouTube, and she talks about the narcissistic side of stuff. She, I think she's British, and she's fantastic. Um, she might be South African, so forgive me, but I think she's wonderful. And um, I think uh, something living with abuse or something. Anyway, she's great. I'll put, I'll put her information below. If you, most of you probably watch her. But she's great because she talks about covert narcissism and narcissism and all of those clinical, technical things. And I have to tell you, if I look at it energetically, if I go into, um, into Nicole Kessinger, what I will say to you is she made really stupid choices and she made bad choices. And I think that, um, I think that she didn't know how to respond and I think she was in shock. And I think that she was in such shock. Think about this. I don't know about you, but if I'd gone on two dates with a guy, and or gal, right? Think about this, everybody. You've gone on, let's say, I'm gonna use it this way. I'm just gonna say two dates, but I want you to remember she'd already slept with him, she was involved with him, she was already thinking marriage with this guy. I want you to think about this. Let's say you go on two dates with somebody and you look in the paper the next day and you find out his wife and his three kids, he's admitted to murdering them. I just want you to imagine how freaked out you'd be. Now, now we can go to her behavior in the police de department. I'm going, let me, I want to tell you guys, I want to, she was so freaked out and not knowing how to behave. I have to tell you, the girl I saw in the pictures with Watts was not the same girl I saw on the tapes because I believe that girl was panicked, freaked out, not knowing what to do. If I went on a date, if I had just met somebody and I've had this happen, I met somebody at a party in 2001 after the World Trade Centers. And I don't want to go into all the details, but I met this guy and I wasn't into him. He insulted me and there were a couple guys behind me and they were like, cool it, man. Well, I found out two months later or something that he had been murdered and I was freaked out. I didn't even know the guy, you know, and I was like, oh my God, because a friend of mine told me, remember that guy who said that to you? I was like, yeah. So even then I was freaked out and I'm like, I was like shaking for half a day. So I want you to remember that when you're up close and personal to murder, we have a different response than we're, when we're viewing it. And remember that, you know, I don't think Nicole was 
was the kind of girl who was a murderer. I think she was a bit of a lo loser in love. I think she was extremely lonely. And I just want you to really get that there's pathos to this girl. I am not saying that she is blameless. And I think she even admitted it. She feels terrible about, she says it in these, these discovery documents, that she feels terrible about the idea that something that she did could have made him, moved him along to murder his family. You know, and think about this for a minute. What guy in his right mind is thinking, you know, if she likes my house, because remember, Nicole probably came over to the house and wow, this is a great house. And he's thinking, because, you know, he's thinking, well, I can't provide this for her, right? And he wants to provide for her. So he's like, I have to get rid of the wife and kids. Everything about what was going on was he needs to get rid of them. And he interpreted her behavior in that way. Was it a perfect storm? Yes. Did she do it? I don't think so. And I really want to stick with law enforcement in that way. I mean, you can jump on some other channels and get some of the other stuff. But what I want to say about that is that, you know, I'm not saying she was a victim, but in some ways he used her too. And, you know, all of their lives were destroyed in one way or another. The sad thing about the um, Shanann and her children is they never had a choice. And, you know, we can say that um, this girl was having an affair, but I want you to remember that Chris Watts allowed it. And if you look at this, he is the guilty party. He's the one who pursued her, lied to her, told her all this stuff, and yeah, she bought into it. But I'm sorry, guys, I have to hold him more responsible than I would Nicole. And I just want to say, I, f I do feel that this girl was probably deeply harassed. And yes, I am going to address this. Yes, she did probably Google um, uh, about Amber Fry and the book deal and how much money she made. Because you know what? She might have been thinking they were missing. She's going to be discovered. Maybe she can write a book about these people being missing and they're found. You know, who knows what she's thinking, right? But I want you to say, I want you to look at it this way. She was drawing the correlation between herself and Amber Fry. And think about this. Amber Fry was a girl who immediately came forward the minute she knew that something was wrong. And, you know, the minute she found out that Scott was married, the moment that, that Kissinger really found out that this, this was his kid, right? Then that was when she really nipped it. So I just, and I, I don't want to see if there was anything more in here. Um, it's, um, there's some stuff about Shanann that I want to bring up in a different video, but I, I really oh, I feel like I've been going on for a while. So a couple of things I want to put out to you about um, Nicole and um, something that I think is important, that in this case, the guilty party is behind bars. It has been solved. The crime has been solved. What we need to look at here is a societal crime. The idea that we are holding her as being the, you know, a guilty party, when in reality, while she's guilty of some things, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty scum bucket of the earth lower than dirt on the ground, okay? She's a naive, stupid girl who made some dumb choices. And I'm not saying, okay, that she, she didn't have a part. But what I am saying is that if we're going to be in this idea of supporting women, we have to look at them both as equal in a sense that if, if this were, if, he, if she was a guy and, and, you know, Chris was a girl, and we've seen this happen, where a woman has killed her whole family, and the guy that the woman was involved with wasn't involved with it, you know. He was having an affair on his wife or whatever, and it, he, he went on with his life. He didn't have to go into witness protection. But I want you to notice that we as a society are taking this woman to task in a way that we have never, in my, in my lifetime, I have never seen a man who had an affair with a woman who killed her family be taken to task the way Nicole Kessinger has been. 
And so I think we have to look at that as a double standard as well. So I hope that this has brought some light into your, your existence around it. And just to say that, remember, Chris Watts is a murderer. He is guilty and he's a liar. He's a cheat. And let's start to go deeper into people that deceive and those of us that fall into those deceptions. And yes, our parts in it, because we want to make sure that these things don't happen anymore. I'd love to hear your feedback. Please remember, say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it mean. And I want you to know, if you start bringing up all sorts of things that are like, you know, and Shanann once had a Slurpee, you know, I, it's like, really guys, stay on the topic of what we're talking about. Talk about Kessinger, because I do want to hear your thoughts on it. And particularly your take on, um, on this conversation about really how we take a woman to task, so, and if I've missed something, say it. I'd love to hear it. Um, and, you know, I love to hear from you and I talk with you all the time. So please know that um, I want to make this as safe a channel for all of us to just say what's going on and have your opinion, have your thoughts, and really look at um, if, if she were a guy and Chris were a woman, would we behave the way we've been behaving? So thank you so much, everybody. I'm giving you lots and lots of love, and I hope everybody's in a really good place today. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna keep exploring stuff, and and there'll be more down the road. I want to do a couple more videos that are in my mind about some of you have, have suggested. And please, 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 if you like this video, if you want to hear from me, please subscribe and please hit the little bell because then you'll know when I'm putting up videos. And before I forget, there is a button in the middle that says community. I often leave notes for y'all up there too. So if you haven't used it before, you can use it on this channel because I will be putting notes up there. It's one of the best ways I can uh, be in touch with you all, even if I'm not around. Uh, if I'm not putting a video up or something, it's usually because I'm working on a book or doing something like that. Talk to you later.